I think there are about 70 photographs in the exhibition and they've all come from the Sean Sexton collection and now regarded as the best collection of its type anywhere in the world. When I was seven or eight in Ireland, uh, 1954 or five, I collected stamps. When you collect stamps, you learn a lot about history, geography, and then in 1973, I started collecting photographs. The show is organised fairly chronologically and, and starts effectively with the early history of photography in Ireland from the 1850s onwards. The British administration allowed or were responsible for the debt of one million people in the Great Starvation, so-called famine in Ireland. One million out of eight million. There were evictions going on later on and then there was the Fenian uprising in the 1860s and it seemed like the British government had learned nothing. And it was against that back backdrop that yet again that rebels, if you want to call them that, had risen in, risen in 1916. The centre of the show deals with um, the Easter Rising itself and some of the main participants in it. The insurgents took over various sites around the centre of Dublin, the headquarters being in the general post office on Sackville Street. The English brought lots of additional troops in from the north of Ireland and from Liverpool and a gunboat up the Liffey and pounded the centre out of the, the city and the um, uprising was put down within six days. I think it's fair to say that the uprising wasn't particularly popular with the general populace. Um, this is the point at which um, 200,000 Irish men were fighting on the British side um, in World War I, and so lots of families depended on the stipend from the British Army for survival. So um, in the immediate aftermath of the Rising, um, there was a lot of hostility towards the insurgents. Very quickly, once the Rising was put down, there are lots of photographers on the street um, taking shots of the what you would imagine, the ruined buildings. Many of the insurgents themselves were not particularly well known at the time. Because of the British response, um, the executions after very hastily convened court martials, and because of the mass um, internment program and martial law that was imposed throughout the country, public opinion shifted almost immediately. And then the photographs um, achieve a, a mythological, almost religious significance. Countess Markovic, she was the one true that remained true in the end and she died in poverty in Dublin in 1927 and never gave up. Yet later on her ex-colleague de Valera and the church set back the women's movement by I think about 70 years. Death and dying, you know, for obvious reasons, and martyrdom becomes important. Hunger strike, which uh, as, a, as a form of political protest in prison, which of course has had lots of resonances since then, right throughout the 20th century in Anglo-Irish um, relations. But it really is established in the immediate aftermath of 1916. The big change begins to happen in about um, 1917, when the amnesty, you know, of a lot of the sort of political prisoners, um, and then the general election that takes place. And Sinn Féin, which had not been involved in um, the Easter Rising whatsoever, suddenly emerges with a huge majority of, uh, and, and attempts to set up um, a provisional government in Dublin, which is completely ignored by Westminster, um, which, of course, then gives rise to um, the War of Independence, a bloody guerrilla war that carried on for a couple of years, um, which culminated with um, the partition of the country um, and the signing of the treaty. The wonderful thing about the Sexton Collection and indeed this show is that the um, range of photographs covers everything from ephemera to shots taken by amateurs at the time, scrapbooks collected in the period afterwards, postcards that were made, as well as the work of professional photographers. There's a, a decisive shift in the exhibition between the kind of images that were taken really prior to 1916, which were much more organised around reportage and kind of commemorating dead nationalist heroes, and then what happens in, with 1916, where suddenly they're presented with a lot of um, very real people who have just been killed or died. Um, so the nature of photography shifts um, immeasurably and at the same time as huge sort of political um, development.